we just have so many fun, wonderful corn recipes for you. Uh, and we're going to start with something that I happen to love. And every time I make it, I say, why don't I make this more often? And you can do this year round, not only when the sweet corn's at its peak, it's a corn and bacon chowder, and it is just delicious. It's kind of like sop up your, use some bread to sop up the bottoms of the bowl with the soup. It's so good. Don't leave any of it in the bowl. So a sip of um, coffee and I'm going to get to work. All righty, corn and bacon chowder. So I started before the show, we started browning some bacon. I've got one pound, we're going to start the diet tomorrow, of bacon that I chopped up in little pieces and I'm just cooking it in a big soup kettle. And this is um, a one pot soup. Everything's going to go right in here. So once it starts to get a little brown, I'm going to, first of all, thank you, Deb. How are you this morning? I'm good, thanks. She's in yellow today to celebrate our corn show. To so celebrate our corn very show. Very good. My yellow shirt was at the dry cleaner, so um, I got a yellow apron. And that a green works shirt. Too. Does that, that work? That works, too. Okay, so I want to um, keep some of the bacon drippings to make the soup with, and it's going to give it some really great flavor, but I want to get rid of all but about a couple tablespoons of those drippings. So I want to leave a a little bit in the pan, but not too much. So I think we're right about there. Perfect. And then I want to take that bacon and get it off to the side on a paper towel and just kind of drain some of that grease. This chowder is just, oof. Yummy, 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 yummy. Something's beeping over there. Oh, I know, that's our corn pudding that we have in the oven. Yum. Not a great corn recipe that we're doing today. Okay, so I've got my bacon out, and I just want to kind of pat it with my paper towel and let that hang out to the side a little bit, and I'm going to get working on the rest of this uh, recipe. I've got about two tablespoons of the bacon drippings in here, and I'm going to add a little bit of butter, because I don't think I've ever met corn that didn't like some butter. So just a couple tablespoons of butter in with that a little more in there. In with those bacon drippings. It's going to give this soup such great flavor. And I'm going to add one large sweet onion that we finely diced up and just cook that in that little bit of butter and that bacon fat. Thanks, Deb. Just want to get that softened a little bit. Now because we happen to have some, we've got uh, four cups of fresh sweet corn that we just took right off the cob. No need to cook it. So just um, you know, take it off the cob raw, uh, you know, raw and um, we're going to use that for this chowder. But if you don't have that or it's not in season, just four cups of just frozen corn will work perfect in this recipe. So either way, the fresh sweet corn of course is always best, but um, frozen will do just fine. I just want these onions to sweat a little bit and I'm going to get to work on some thyme. I'm using some fresh thyme in this recipe just because it's really got some nice flavor. But if you don't have fresh thyme on hand, dried thyme will work great. I'm going to do a couple teaspoons of it. It just smells so good. So when you're using fresh thyme, just basically, you know, run your fingers down the opposite way to kind of get those leaves off. And then I'll just give it a rough chop. It just smells so good. And if you have any good corn recipes, hey, don't keep them a secret. Let me know about them. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more corn, or thyme, I should say. I've got corn on the brain today. Deb, are you a sweet corn person? I am. I love sweet corn, but I've not had any yet this year. Well, my goodness, you're going to have some so today. So I'm looking forward to this chowder. It always takes this, you know, sweet corn season always takes this good old time to get here, doesn't it? And then when it's here, it's like, oh. And it's such a short season, you know, it just doesn't last very long. So um, then you have to wait again until next year. But that's why all the recipes we're doing today, you don't need to use the corn right off the cob. You're craving corn in the middle of winter. Not a problem. Make a bowl of this big batch of this corn chowder and 
you'll get your corn fixed. Okay, so my onions are looking wonderful. I'm gonna add my fresh thyme. It's really gonna make this soup outstanding. And when you're making soups and stews, it's really important to kind of season as you go. My friend and chef, Peter Kinsey, is here with us this morning, and he's got a couple of great corn recipes up his sleeve, but he's the one who turned us on to this great tip that we use every single day. Um, it, this is basically a great thing to keep uh, just on, you know, on the side of your stove, and when you're making soups or stews or just cooking dinner of any kind, this is a, a mixture, the perfect mixture of salt and pepper, and it's one cup of coarsely ground uh, or just kosher salt is what I'm, I'm talking about. One cup of kosher salt and one tablespoon of coarsely ground black pepper. Perfect mixture together. Just keep it by your stove top and just makes you know cooking so much easier. You can just you know pick up a little and season as you go. Okay, now um, chowder. We're making a corn and, and bacon chowder and. Uh, chowder always has some sort of a potato in it. So I always, you know me, looking for shortcuts all the time. And I was, you know, always like a little bit of red pepper in my corn chowder. Um, but this is a, a great way to have your red pepper and your potato already diced for you. Who wants to peel and dice all those potatoes? So this is just a bag of O'Brien potatoes. And I'm going to do four cups of the potatoes, and this is, has the onion, the green, and the red pepper right in there. What the heck, it's just about the whole bag, so in you go. So that's a whole bag of just O'Brien potatoes that we've let thaw just a little bit. Thanks, Deb. And I love to have bags of frozen potatoes on this, uh, like this on hand, and then when you're making soups and stews like that, it's just not a big deal um, because you know, you don't have to be hassling with the potatoes and things like that. Okay, I'm going to turn up the heat and I'm going to add some chicken stock. The recipe calls for about six cups of chicken stock, but I'll start with four and I can always add a little bit more. So in goes my chicken stock. Also in goes my fresh corn on the cob. So again, this is four cups. I'm going to get that in there. And Sunday is usually kind of the big soup making day in my house. That's the day where, um, you know, it seems to ha like I have a little bit of extra time. And so I, you know, cook big on Sunday. So this is a great day. You know, if you make a big batch of soup, I love it because then during the week, you know, if you um, come home or you just need to pack a quick lunch, I usually try and pack my husband lunch um, so he's not going to those fast food restaurants that he works right next to. Um, you know, I can um, Sunday make a big batch of soup and, and load it in some containers and you know send them off to work with a, a little uh, container of soup that he can microwave same goes for me it also can make a great dinner so you know be thinking of that um, it, it's you know life can get crazy busy during the week so uh, you know making dinner isn't always an option it just sometimes some nights it just doesn't happen so that's why I love to make a big batch of soup especially on a Sunday and this one really is hearty okay so um, I'm waiting for this to heat up a little bit and I'm gonna make what I call also gonna add some heavy cream I told you the soup keeps getting better and better. Um, so I'm going to make something that's called a slurry. And that is basically, we want to thicken this soup. And you notice I didn't do any flour in this soup. I really want this to, uh, you, you, you know, I want to be able to taste the corn and taste all the different components of this soup. So I've got some cold water, six tablespoons of cold water, and six tablespoons of cornstarch. So just equal parts. I'm just going to use a whisk, and this is going to help bind that soup together. My favorite, my husband's favorite all-time dinner. He asked for this for his birthday every year on his birthday is barbecue chicken, he's got a summer birthday, potato salad, corn on the cob, and then some sort of, he would prefer a apple or a cherry pie rather than a, 
than a cake. So that is his birthday dinner. Would Simple you kind make of guy. That for my birthday, I will. I know. Isn't that like the sounds all perfect. all American dinner? Yeah, it sounds good. It's there's you just can't beat it. So then you know when you're doing when you've got leftover corn, there's so many different things you can do with it. And is it just me or do I always like when you're doing corn on the cob? Do you always do like four extra ears? Always, always. It's like you can't run out of corn. Well, you can't also you can't just buy a half dozen. You got to buy a dozen ears, right? Sure. When you go to this roast stand, stands, you know I get a dozen, and then you you know you always have a little extra. So but so don't throw it out. You know, it's just great in salads and, and soups and so many different things. Corn pudding. Okay, I'm going to add my bacon. Not all of it, because so we're going to save some to, to go on the top to garnish the soup. And now I'm going to add just a dash or two, um, and then you don't have to add too much, um, but this is just going to give it some flavor of hot sauce. All right. Now I'm going to add my slurry. I'm making a big corn mess, but that's okay. It's all worth it. So when you add this, this is really important. Um, when I'm adding my cornstarch and my water mixture, is to continually, just like you would kind of with flour, you need to whisk, whisk, whisk. It smells absolutely amazing. And this is going to just thicken it up a little bit once it comes to a boil, and we're almost there. All right, I'm waiting for that to do its thing. I'm gonna just top a little bit of parsley, or you could do fresh chives on top, would be wonderful. And it's really important these days, um, you know, Everybody's always about wowing people or looking like a rock star. So, uh, you know, if you notice when you go to the restaurants um, and you get a great bowl of soup, it's got a little bit of a fun garnish on it. So I try and do a little fun garnish at home when I'm doing soups and stews too, whether it just be, you know, if you're doing chili, doing, you know, the traditional chili fixings on top, sour cream and green onions, cilantro. Um, but soups, I also like to think about what's in the soup, what would go well with the soup, and just have a little, you know, make it pretty. So I'm just chopping up some flat leaf parsley, also called Italian parsley. I got an email or somebody Facebooked me the other day and said, I've been looking all over for Italian parsley. I've gone to every grocery store and I couldn't find it. Well, it's one of those things that sometimes they call it flat leaf parsley. So it's either called Italian parsley or flat leaf parsley, but I guarantee you, your grocery store has it. I was just at festival yesterday and double checked and they had it right there. So, okay. My soup is starting to thicken a little bit. And just, you see how it's becoming a little creamy? You can add a little more heavy cream or a little bit more stock. Just depends on, you know, I always have a little extra on hand just to see if, if it needs it. But this looks just perfect. All right, time to ladle up a bowl of this. We're going to be fighting over this later. And this isn't a real thick chowder. This chowder is really all about what's inside, the bacon, the potatoes, the corn in that fresh thyme, wow. Mm. And those O'Brien potatoes just make this chowder really a pretty quick fix. All right, serve it with a little bread to sop it right up, throw a little bit of extra that reserve crumble bacon on top, because you can never have too much bacon, right? And then a little bit of parsley. And there you go. It's my bacon and corn chowder. This is Lick the Bowl Good, I promise you. Recipes on our website. You can also pick this one up at any area, Festival Foods.